This is overstood hazel coppice. It may be 12 to 15 years since it was last cut. But that does not mean it's 12 to 15 years old. If we look at this stool in front of us, we can see that it's quite large. Now is this one, two, three, four, five individual close together stools? Or is this one tree that's spread out around a center and has been cut many, many times? Don't forget hazel ideally cut five to seven years. So if you can imagine a lot of cuts, as we saw on one of the other videos I posted, stools tend to grow outwards from the outside. Now if you look around here, hopefully you can see there's another one, two, three. And the question is going to be, are they separate trees, separate stools? Or is this all one big one that's got a bit sort of lopsided and spread? Don't know, can't prove it. The only way you could prove it just to do an analysis of the genetics of this and find out whether this is all one organism. If the genes are the same in here, 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 here and here. But it's very possible that this is a very old, very large tree indeed. Much older than this big moribund cherry that you're seeing through here. Just about see the uh, crown of that through the uh, hazel. This one here, similar. Is this one, two, three, or is this all one? Who knows? Some of the oldest trees in the British Isles aren't great big oak standards like you find in places like Mockers Park and Hatfield Forest. They're actually rings of small leaved lime that you find down in the Weald of Sussex and Kent and running along the Hampshire coast to places like Leap Country Park, which is spelled L-E-P-E, -E, where I saw them many years ago on a course run by the British Trust for Conservation Volunteers. Now sadly changed its name and I think departed. And basically they don't reproduce. This is small leaf lime. Can't remember the Latin name, Tilly or something. They used to reproduce fairly freely in Britain when the climate was warmer many centuries ago after the English Channel broke through. So they got into the country and then they tended to spread and form a, a large component of the woodlands. But they're very, very palatable. So it is thought that early man cut them to use the timber and also to feed livestock in times of hardship. And in some of these areas, they've been cut as coppice again and again and again and the trees, the, the rings that they've left of trunks are now many tens of feet across. This is also a, lot, a large ring and this is hazel and you can hopefully see that this is quite big. So this is about five feet across. It's a big old tree I am certain. Walk through, see what else we can find. Another big stall. You can see where the original stems were cut. Looks like this was cut as derelict coppice. See, they're quite big. They've regrown here. But this is now overstood. It's got signs of deer damage all through it. Some of the regrowth is affected like this. This is deer develveting the antlers. That's tried to repair itself. More of it over there, but a lot of the regrowth is very bent and kinky. Also, it's now bigger than is useful for coppice crafts. Premium market for that, of course, is for hazel hurdles. Sold in garden centres for quite a lot of money sometimes. And it's too small for firewood. But if you leave this, 50 or 60 years so it's the size of firewood that, that I like and I use that's convenient for that. See on some of my other videos what's going to happen then 
is that the size of the coppice stools will get smaller and the number of stems per stool will get smaller and some of them will start to die out. This at the moment will be dead easy to recut. You could rip through here, guys with chainsaws, make dead hedges from it. So you're basically cutting the waste, dead hedging it, protecting it from deer, and this will come back very, very nicely indeed. But this being a private landowner doesn't have the resources to do that. There's no way you could make any money from selling any produce from here. Slightly possible, you could get an expert and slightly desperate coppice worker to come in and cut this at no cost. But he wouldn't want to put the extra effort at no cost in to build dead hedges or to pay for permanent deer fence. But as we walk through here, Seen how big some of these stalls are. And if this was recut and fenced against deer, I think this would come back as grade two or grade one coppice, which is quite valuable. But unfortunately, the way farming is in the country these days, you can't really borrow against the future. Let's walk a little bit further, see what we can see. There's another enormous stool here. Look at the size of that. What a glorious thing. So if we look around, let's say this is 20 years old. I think it's younger than that. But look at the amount that it's grown since it was last cut in 20 years. If you say this is a hectare in size, which it is just about, multiply what you can see in front of you up by one hectare, and you'll come to the fact that in 15 years it's put on an awful lot of growth. There's a huge tonnage here. This is all captured carbon. It's very much in vogue at the moment to talk about capturing carbon to ward against climate change. There's a lot of talk about planting trees as carbon offset, but a planted tree would be very lucky indeed if it grows to the size of, say, two of these individual stems in 15 years. So this has grown much, much faster, put on much, much more growth. Coppice woodland is extremely good if protected against deer at capturing carbon and storing it temporarily in wood. You've also got the fact that if you plant a tree in say an area of field which could potentially be used for livestock, for food, or for arable, for food, you've got a small root system but the root systems on here are huge. All underneath my feet here and all in this open area you've got root systems of these hazel and also the mycorrhizal symbionts which are basically fungi which trade nutrients and water with these trees. So you've got an old system here which is in some kind of balance. Cut it and recut it. And I think our current government needs to think very very carefully about how much more effective in cycle coppice like this is for capturing carbon storing it temporarily and then having the produce used for instance in buildings where it's locked away for the life of the building and putting in grant aid to encourage restoration of coppice like this and running it in a cycle without some kind of grant aid restoration of this is just not possible this was probably recut with some kind of grant aid unless they got somebody in to cut it as firewood. So that's just my thoughts, my opinions. If you like it, then say. If you don't like it, then say. I'm quite happy to have a discussion. But what I want is for people to think. This, this 
type of coppice in this condition is not very common. And as well as being a potential huge asset for carbon capture, it's also a huge asset for nature conservation. And later in the season, we'll go through and we'll look at some of the wildflowers. We've only got the very early ones at the moment. Here we've got bluebell and primrose, which the deer don't eat. And deer, of course, are another question. Hope that was interesting. <laughs>